All right, everyone. Welcome back to episode 55 in this Woo! world of Moondust. Uh, Ooh. Crazy how we're shit. dumb enough to keep doing at this. I mean, somebody needs to go back and check um, how many episodes you guys have been on this island, or how many days you guys have been on this island. I don't, I don't necessarily care about episodes but the amount of time on this island definitely feels like a lot more than the uh, the previous one <laughs> no it's just a lot's been happening over the course of a small amount of time that's true it's it's more like a week. that's like how long we've been in that dungeon yeah, i think it's been about three days you guys were Ish. in the dungeon for just shy of three days yes and how many weeks was that in our i want to say life? like five too many six uh-huh you basically you've thrown everything and the kitchen sink at Dinoc right now, <laughs> and it's just taking them this this many episodes to unpack it. Well, he is taking it in stride, and he is doing <laughs> well on the surface. He is doing an okay job, but I, the DM, the All Seer, knows very well that he is like a mere child inside. Anyway, uh. <laughs> I mean, I would be, I would be in tears, my dude. Anyway, <laughs> uh, is anybody you know, an inspiration? I do have a question. Oh, sure. Uh, we, I kind of forgot after last session, but uh, I got that staff of Adder, but never got the stats or anything for it. The staff, the staff of the Adder. Yeah. Oh, I just anticipated you looking it up on uh, D and D Beyond. Um, oh, I didn't. I didn't know it was on there. So, Jeez, 90, let me do that. Ninety nine percent of the time, if I tell you an item, it mm -hmm. is on D and D Beyond. Okay, let me see if it'll let me do it. If not, I have the stats right here for you. Just spells that I almost never. Magic item. Click. So it turns into a snake. It has um, reach of five feet, proficiency bonus. Oh, your proficiency bonus when you make the attack roll uh, deals a d6 of poison or piercing damage and 3d6 poison damage if a failed con save of 15 occurs. Yeah, it won't let me look at it because it's part of the Dungeon Master's Guide that I don't have. Of course. Dungeon Master's Guide should be a free. Anyway, all right. Um. Uh, let's see here. Meow. Meow. I'm sending it to you over Discord. Okay, that'll work. Then I can just type it up real quick while y'all do the recap. Yep, there you go. Thank you. Yeah, because that'll be helpful for you anyway. All right, I don't think anyone used inspiration last time, so we're just going to... I can do it then. Uh, also, oh. uh, Katie is currently muted, but she does say... Uh, Oh, I think she's insulting me, calling me a dingus. <laughs> uh, and now her computer's being a dingus because it closed. It, it uh, closed. Chrome she's halfway she's through. saying that she's responding to when you sit almost had a conniption. Oh, got you. I wasn't just insulting you for no reason. <laughs> I mean, I'm used to it. <laughs> He's got to deal with me and my wife. I mean, what? Uh, <laughs> It's okay. She doesn't watch this. Uh <laughs> oh, no. oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Lines, you good, bro? Roll initiative. All right, I think we're good. Um, <laughs> okay. So, last session, the party fought a or finished the fight with the Draculich. John, delivering the final blow, turned erupted the skeletal remains into a bluish fire, a soul fire. Um a a fire that only occurs when the soul of a creature is being burnt to the point of destroyed. Um and that was how the Draculich went out. They did, however, find, because a Draculich is originally a dragon, 
case you guys didn't know that, they found that what the horde that was once belonged to this dragon, and they found a crap load of treasure. I'm not going to list everything out. If you're interested in everything that they found, go watch, watch the last episode. But the two key things that they found was they found two scrolls of Raise Dead, which is a very powerful magical spell that can be used to bring back, well, in this situation, because they are scrolls, they can be brought, used to, be, to bring back two people who have died in the last week, I believe it is. Ten days. Ten sure. days. So, about a, just over a week. Yep. So, that is... That is the major things that they found in... Uh, in, in the Horde. And they then came up the stairs that were in the basement previously and have found themselves in a what has appeared to be a locked room that connects to a storage room. In the storage room, this room up here being locked and apparently leading to nowhere. The only door present currently is sealed and reinforced with what appears to be a, an additional steel door behind it. And... There are no windows, no other apparent or obvious ways of escape as of the moment. And that is where we had left the party last session. So, uh, John and Cardin, you guys had... I'm going to bring you over here, John, because you had attempted to knock down a door. I believe, anyway. And you guys... Uh, you guys were unsuccessful in knocking down the door that Cardin currently stands in front of. We lost Cardin mm -hmm. again. And what do you guys do? Katya, did you cast a spell last last time? I don't remember. I did not. Okay, I, was just, I just couldn't remember why you were over there behind Cardin. I remember I was gonna assist Cardin, but then Cardin rolled well, and I was like, "Oh, never mind." Oh, so you just you just returned back over to the group. I was actually gonna try and blast down the door, but then Cardin kind of got through it. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Okay. Metal he, behind the door. Yeah, there's metal <laughs> behind the door. Yeah, he he cut into the door, but it, re yeah. it just revealed metal uh, behind the door. So you guys may want to take another step back. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Uh oh. I mean, I guess it depends on what he's gonna do. Yeah. But most things of his are like a 30 foot range. Okay. That I've seen, that I remember. Mm -hmm. So it's like, eh? I'll, I'll ritual cast uh, the tech magic. Okay. Um. You spend 10 minutes. Yep. Uh, you, uh, let's see here. Oops, that is the wrong thing. We're going to go ahead and turn on your shiny aura because that's 30 feet. Nope. Can everyone see that? I believe so. I can see it. No. There we go. Everyone there can go. see that now. Um, Ooh, John needs his aura. Oh, shit. Oop. Yeah, John's aura. Don't worry, I'm testing it. Wow. 10 feet. Man, having to deal with auras is like dumb. Mm hmm. Um, but you want me to cast another aura? No. Okay. But that it's works. very cool being <laughs> able to see them. Yeah. Okay. So you detect within this range. Somebody's having some issues. Yeah, I, I, his mic isn't working apparently. Um, Don't you just, yourself. 
rapid gas detector. I mean, in a sense, he did. All right, so you actually, from this range, you actually detect two um, sources of magic. Outside of what the party already has? Yeah, the party isn't within your range. Oh, true. Two sources. Okay, where are the two sources? Okay. One is directly in front of you, the door. Okay. The other one is right about here-ish. Okay. I'm going to investigate that here-ish. Hold on, hold on. I'm not done. I'm not going to investigate detect, it. Because tech, Detect Magic does another thing. It tells you what school of magic. All right, are. yes. So... The first school of magic that you detect is abjuration, and that is on the door directly in front of you. Abjuration. Okay. Yep. The, Probably magical lock or something like that. The second mm -hmm. one is a... It, it's also abjuration, but it's but the abjuration is like an underlying um, aura. The major magical aura that you get from this one is illusory magic illusory ah okay well i want to go investigate the illusory here see if i can find what it's hiding sure make an investigation check i'll give you advantage because of your detect magic investigation Oop. six Okay, just so you, you're aware, you are on uh, Whisper again, so I see it. Oh, but... shit, yeah. No, I'm just, le just letting you know. So, Thank you. Six. Yes, I understand people now. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he lives. Blind. Volume. My, my, um, everything was roboting for me, so. Ah, that's interesting. That sucks. Um, with a six, however, Katia, mm -hmm. you don't find anything. Well, I'll relay the message to Dinoch and be like, I know there's something here, but I can't seem to find it. I know it's magical. It's something hidden. Something here, you say? Yes. It's roughly in this area where he is. Do you wish to uh, roll investigation as well? Yeah, and if I find something, I'm going to identify it. Okay, I will go ahead and tell you to roll investigation with advantage, since Katya is assisting in the in, the, in terms of that he's pointing out the area. There. <laughs> okay. Let's... Thank God for that advantage. Yes, mm -hmm. that is a nineteen. Um, which is sufficient. Um, you... If it wasn't, I'd be worried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, after feeling around for a little bit, you actually notice a... what, a, what appears to be a, a seam in this wooden wall, basically. And eventually, due to the fact of how illusions work, you realize that there is a door here. Oh, as you're a able hidden to, door. As you're able to eventually see through the illusion and understand that there's a door here. It's just hidden and in magic. Oh, I wonder what's behind it. Maybe we should, we should send somebody with a little more muscle first. <laughs> If only we had someone who was capable in stealth first. Hmm. I mean, I'm probably the quietest one here, oddly enough. Um, honestly, I think Asta might have you beat. Quite possibly. I could also yes. send in Swamp if he'll fit through the door. You could also just summon him on the other side of the door. Oh, wait, he's already summoned. Number, number yeah. Uh, unfortunately, he it, is a, it is a small door. <laughs> Carden oh, just Lord. goes to kick it. Um, 
Hold on, I gotta think because of the way this works. So that an 18 athletics check is insufficient, Carden, as you run up and basically throw Dinoc out of the way and try to boot the door. It it bends and bows, and you can feel the wood cracking under your boot, uh, but it does not break. The shimmering arcane force uh, seems to hold it in place. I don't know. Have we tried um, trying to just open it? Perhaps it's not locked. Not yet. It is locked. <laughs> you well, try the door. It is locked. Or Car- like, there's some force preventing it from opening. Oh, perhaps it's locked with magic. If only we had a dispel magic around here. Don't one of y'all have it? I yes. know. I, I know. I'll yeah, I know a certain cleric here who knows how to dispel magic. If he'll do the honors. If he has it prepared. Ironically enough, I have that one prepared. Ah, finally, you have something we need prepared. <laughs> finally, the cleric came prepared for something. Oh, well, now I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then we'll just all stand here and stare at each other in the hallway and go nowhere. I mean, in the hallway. Before I cast, um, did we already determine that it is sealed with magic and it's not another metal thing there? You know for sh- you know for certain there is magic there. You do not know if there's metal behind it or not, uh, because he rolled ath- because he rolled athletics. He is trying to brute force the door open instead of chopping uh, to break away wood. So you don't know yeah. what's on the other side. You, I would say Cardin um, is smart enough to know that there was a lot more give on this door than there was on the other one. Oh, okay. Uh, Cardin, will, Cardin will basically be like, yeah, the door actually bowed a little bit on this one rather than um, just staying put and sending a shock up my leg. Yeah. Um, in case I will cast detect, or detect Dispel Magic on it. Okay. You cast. Uh, that one was really hard to get out, wasn't it? You want to detect dispel magic. You cast <laughs> dispel magic, and uh, I sense that he's dispelling magic. <laughs> yes, you, you, uh, you, Katya would feel that the 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 magic fade from the door. Ah, yes. Now try opening it. Just gonna casually open it. I'm not gonna. Okay. It try to is force still. It. it is still locked. Of course. <laughs> well, it's not magical anymore. But oh no. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna step back. Hang on. I, yeah. I, I like for this one for Cardin to just like walk up and like grab the door handle and shoulder check where the hinges are, and the entire door just <laughs> out of the. Out of the wall here, because <laughs> I like that too. Because <laughs> that definitely um, reveals this area. I'm gonna go ahead. And Honey go closet. There. Ooh, what, what do you see? Secret, secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. Uh, Dinoc, when you enter this hallway you begin to see things that you recognize. This appears to be, to the best of your knowledge anyway, this mm-hmm. appears to be the, uh, the, um, the council building. Oh, okay. From so, when Uncle Enron took me when I was younger. Yes. Right. The the area that you are, this back area here, is not an area you are familiar with. It is an area that you have never been before, even even with even when accompanying your uncle. Mm-hmm. I mean, after all, even if it's a kid, you never show him the the back areas. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, important double doors to council room. I'm betting. To the best of your knowledge, yes. I suggest that I should go first, just in case there have been any magical traps placed between us and our destination. 
but I will need directions. First doors here to the left are, if I remember right, to the council chambers. All right. Let's take it nice and slow. I hate to step on some explosive magic floor tile or something. Um. Oh god, he just... <laughs> Alrighty. Um, so where are you guys heading? Are you guys going to try and attempt to go through the next door, or are you going to go down the hallway? I thought we were going here. Well, there's also a door right here in front of Cardin. Cardin, please. Yes, open, in front of... open! Open the door first. Do not attack it. Try to use the handle. The door here in front nah. of Cardin? Yeah. Oh, Use a door handle. You need... Oh, God. The, the door in front of Cardin is... It was unlocked, but now it's even more unlocked as he kind of breaks it a little bit. Well, if they didn't know we were coming before, they do now. It doesn't matter if they know. Yes, it does. We would have gotten surprise attacks off. So, Cardin well, tells me that... It's highly doubtful. Arden, stay behind us from now oh, on. Also, real quick, just as a reminder to myself, who is wearing and attuned to the amulet of uh, proof against uh, detection and location? Is that Balinar? Apparently, so. yes. Yeah, I think yep, so. that's me. Okay, just making sure. So, b before we continue on, Balinar's going to walk up to Cardin and go, Cardin. So, he's going to reach out, he's going to grab where the door handle is and show him how to use a door handle. <laughs> I love it. This is how to you use a door handle. To be fair, Cardin, before coming to the islands, would not have really encountered doors that much. <laughs> I, I would agree. Alright, what's in this? Uh, so, eventually, you That's see good. that this... Appears to be the waiting lobby. The ah, the reception area. Yep, the entrance to the guild hall. And I will say there is another hallway going down this way. That does reveal another, do a couple more doors uh, way down to the other side, on the other side. This entire well, place, by the way, is dimly lit, so you can see without dark vision. It's just, mm -hmm. it's empty. Because I do believe it's fairly late at night while you guys are here. Mm -hmm. Do I remember what's in this room? Uh, you have never been inside, but you have been told that that is the armory door. Oh. It caught you. Mm -hmm. We may have something up ahead. You want what to do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, up ahead in this hallway, there's, if I remember right, I do believe Uncle Enran told me that that door way down there... Hang on. Excuse me, Cardin. Let me walk. No. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I phased through you. <laughs> <laughs> that door down there should mm -hmm. be to the armory. And I'm mean, as, soon as, as soon as you say armory. Gordon, <laughs> 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 remember the doorknob. <laughs> Is it <Come> on? <laughs> okay, he didn't go boom, so I guess it's safe well, to travel. This doorway here, if you're trying to go through there, Cardin, is currently unlocked. Cardin, stop. Do not make me. Cardin. Katya, is it magical door? Do I detect uh... magic? Can you click detect magic for me? I need to read something about thickness. Thickness? Oh my. Yes. One foot of it's stone, thick. three feet of wood or dirt. Okay. I just want to say if Boblin's staying out there, then John's going to stay with him and kind of guard out here. Okay. That is understood. Um, so the doorway itself is not magical. Um... They would have it lined thinly. 
but you wouldn't be able to detect anything on the inside. So it would stop along that along the wall, like your detect magic. You just don't uh-huh. get anything outside of that. But these, I will tell, I will give you from your perspective, these three doors are not magically trapped. Good. I am going to try and open the door. <clears throat> okay. That door is locked. Uh, I don't suppose anybody has a key. Odin. They're not going to leave the armory unlocked. You never know. You never know. Let me get out of your way. Oh, geez, he's just going to try and cut it. Okay. Yeah. A 25 will hit and cut into the door. Roll damage. That'll do. Eh. <laughs> and just <gasps> the door is broken into. I hope um, we're not going to get charged by the city for destruction of property. property. I will say. Fair enough. I will say. Uh, oop, that's the wrong tool. My bad. That was an arrow. Yep, I was <laughs> trying to get the reveal. Tools. Exist. What? I don't know how you heard about that word, but I, that's some kind of project, I do believe. So, One of my old friends was developing a <laughs> year ago, I believe. He never told me what it was. Whoa. Oh, damn. That's a... Armory. Let me, let me go in and see um, if I can find any magical items. You're the I'll first one in, Dinoc? Oh, okay. Hold on, hold on. Everybody yes, else go back because he was the first one through the door. Yeah. Uh, so, you step in, Dinoc, and you immediately hear access not permitted. And you hear... Uh-oh. Uh, can you make a dexterity saving throw for me? Oh, she... Uh, the other one. Uh, fourteen. Um, that will be enough. You just barely in time roll out of the way as this. Essentially, you can see it at the very last moment. This cannon down here. As you enter, sure. just. <laughs> This ball of energy at you, and you oh. take uh, do the guys behind me take anything? I'll make Carton make a dexterity saving throw since he's in the doorway. He's also got kind of partial cover, so he's got plus two to the save. <laughs> 16. Okay. That's enough. Um, hold on, I miscounted now. So, you would take uh, nine points of force damage, Dinoc. Uh And Cardin, I will say you do this. You, you take the same. Um, just from being surprised. Uh, you do succeed, but Still one of those kind of uh AoE. Yeah. Well, uh, it, it, it's literally just like a cannonball as it impacts you guys and kind of pushes around a little bit. Um and at that then at that point in time, Katya, you register two magical signatures um with your detect magic. Oh, um let me guess. The two 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 statues. Actually, sorry, no, the th- you detect three because this one is technically within your aura as well. So you you would hit these two and this one all begin to <laughs> intruder present and they begin to turn towards you, Dinoc. You have a moment can to I, react. <laughs> can I Uh-oh. step back? You can. Gordon, get the fuck out of my way. As you do so, the. the... Not there! Do you say? Do you I, go into the room, Carden? I push um, me back. Like I'm just like, okay. Back, 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 back. Okay. As you step out, as the statues are beginning to turn towards you, they kind of just 
crunch and just kind of go back to an inert position. All right, so how do we shut down this vault? Uh, probably magical artifact. Side question. Uh huh. Do we even need to go into this vault? Not really, but it would be nice to get some more, you know, better weaponry, considering, you know, this is the council chambers. Uh, I guess that's fine. And I will also say that cannon cannon. blast was very loud. Like, (laughs) everyone heard that, including John, who's on the other side of the... Yeah, he uh, didn't follow us. The the thing at the moment. He's like, oh, God, they're dead. (laughs) Like, well, I'm glad Boblin isn't there. (laughs) (laughs) So even you heard that. And Carden's like, I sort of want that cannon. Was that Katya? <laughs> yes. I knew it. Isn't it always? <laughs> well, I guess we're not getting in there. Let's go back around. Could we just use like this door? I guess we wouldn't know what's on the other side, one, would we? Why can't we fight those mechanical thingies? Because that thing was loud and that alerted anyone. And believe me, they'll be less forgiving than any squishy target. Let's head to the no care, squishy. Uh, Bonner's going to go here and open <laughs> this door. Okay, you open that Fortunately, door. Fortunately, it is not sealed. It was unlocked. Yep. All right. All right. Let me, let me lead us. Hallway over here. Hey, we're back in this hallway. Yep. Oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> so, what about this I door? Try here? this door. Uh, hold on one second. I gotta readjust my. Uh, this room is unlocked. I open it and then step aside for Cardin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, hold on one second here. Whoop. I learned my lesson. Whoop. Oh, there he just goes. It's a bedroom. Oh. What? Why is there a bedroom here? Who Probably lives in the castle? Uh, Carden starts <laughs> jumping on the bed. Carden. Oh, as you Carden. jump on, as you jump on the bed, you can see several layers of dust fly up from the sheets. Uh. It seems it seems to have not been used in some time. Am I getting any magical pings from here? You are not. I am not. Okay. Well, I can check out this desk. <laughs> All right. Sure. Roll investigation on the desk, Valinor. Oh. Uh, where I am blind. Oh, oh, it's just straight intelligence. Fantastic. Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. Um, there doesn't seem to be any recent uh, documents here. It seems to be everything that you're reading seems to either be very old or have been left here intentionally. Like there's a book, uh, there's a couple pieces of paper that seem to have notes on that specific book. Um, and every now and then you'll find like this crumpled, dried piece of paper that is like. <laughs> um nothing more than a essentially a, either a reflection or some kind of um so go, or, or or some kind of like um what's the word I'm looking for I guess information about what they have about what this individual has seen within the city um it appears to be like some kind of visitor of some kind um uh, for okay. the most part so is, is there a name on any of those uh you do not find a name with an 11 on okay I'm gonna take yeah. the book actually i'm just gonna take the book and notes because it doesn't look like anyone's been in here for a long time okay is it is that the, ch- is that a trunk right there may i check yeah. the trunk yeah, you open it and it is got a bunch of different, like, they're not cl- dirty, but they're not clean. They're like dusty. Um, 
tra traveling clothes and different kinds of like just random garments for if a what appear to be if a visitor were to appear they would have a change of clothes or something like that if if it was needed and then i also want to check the bookshelf over there okay. come on guys the bookshelf yeah, literally we'll just, has, just has a bunch of different novels that have been written uh by different people in the city You know what? Okay, nothing to see, to see here. Let's yeah. move it on. So I'm going to have my skeleton come over here to the door mm -hmm. and wave John and everyone else. And then right. come back. Yeah, he could do that. And you said Swamp can't fit through the door, though, right? Um... He could probably fit the door one. He could squeeze. <laughs> it would be a tight fit for him, but I would like it would take extra movement for him to fit, uh, fit through that other door. Am I getting any presents from detect magic by these doors? Uh, you do not feel any kind of magic beyond the doors. Okay. Fair enough. How'd the search go? Oh, Fruitless. there's a uh, armory down there, but automated <laughs> defenses. Uh, didn't want to deal with that too much more. Constru constructs, um, explosive cannons. Yeah. John? We couldn't fight them. Well, that loud boom kind of alerted everyone, so I want to get this. There. was that also i'd like to point out we kind of ignored some stairs no the, never mind that's where we came from yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> honestly at first i thought you were talking about um if you like if you zoom out like these things here and down here light yeah that's windows. A, those are windows <laughs> All right, Cardin. Oh yeah. Try to open the door, please. Carefully. Cardin will the door. push on the door. Uh, or handle. You know how... Is it like a swinging door, or is it like a door handle door? It's like a door handle. He will uh, push on the door handle. Okay. Event, you do open the door. I'm not going to make you <laughs> look like an idiot the entire time. Uh, and the this entire time, this well, like, he was literally just going to try and like push the, you know, but yeah, yes. he's going to pull it open eventually. Opens. And you see, you before you guys freak out, that you guys see a, you see guys see the council, uh, you guys see the round table with four chairs, this kind of open area where people can sit and talk with this large table in the center. Um, two windows are at the back. And there are, seem to be a series of bookshelves in here. I just didn't have the space to put them on due to rendering. Um, and sitting calmly at one of the table at the table, hands folded, is a Goliath individual who you guys have met before. Um, it is yeah. Jor, uh, Jor Ta uh, Tam, the Goliath individual from the Tam family, head of the Champions Ward. Oh. Yeah. Um, and you guys George Tan you guys have confirmed by this point that he is at least or at the very least heavily suspected of being a vampire himself which is why I'm using that token to confirm your guys' suspicion and he is sitting at the table calmly and he just kind of looks up to you guys as you guys up arrive and he kind of goes he kind of looks to his wrist that is some impressive timing. I did not expect you until at least before, at least until dawn. We had a lucky happenstance. Of course you did. Um, he does not see Boblin, so he kind of just 
looks to you and is... I carry a message for you guys from Torben. Not Lord Torben? <laughs> he kind of smiles and he kind of goes, Only in his presence is he a lord. Dinok, you've known this guy for a very long time. He has been power hungry since the day you have met him. The amount of respect he has for pretty much anyone only extends to as much power as they can give him. Uh, and in his mind, he's on level playing fields with Torben. <clears throat> but he goes... He's still upset at you guys for, well... Breaking his toy, breaking as he said. Breaking his toy. And he's also very upset about the death of an individual known as, um, Larazon? I believe is how he, how he called it. A friend of Teen his. my bullshit? You have never heard the name before. At least ah. not to my knowledge. He goes, I've heard it. He, he just kind of goes, he shrugs and goes, apparently this was a friend whom he was traveling with uh, on Isaris. Hold on real quick. Mm -hmm. I step out. Yep. Uh, you, come oh. over here. The tiefling skeleton. That guy. Uh, this would be the pro one, I do believe. The tiefling he was traveling with. Perhaps that is him. I've never met the individual. I just know he- I just know Torben is still very upset by this. He wishes to set up... ...a conversation... ...with... ...you guys. Or the lot of you. I bet he does. He wants to talk to us? That sounds very opposite from what he's been trying to do this whole time. Talk, I don't know if he's willing to put on us. the mask again. Well, talk, you stab need, us, you need whatever you want. You need to get want. closer if you're going to participate in the conversation. Um, sorry, what was that, Dinak? Talk, stab us, one of those, right? As far as I am aware, he has not said anything about having a ambush set for you guys. He just asks for a conversation. Honestly, he would be fine with holding it in this very room. The room doesn't look large enough to have a battle, and so... It'd also be on his turf. Oh, you misunderstand. And he points to the ceiling. Uh, which, in this room, is about 35-ish, 30, 40 feet um, in the air. Uh, which is why your detect magic is not pinging it. Uh, oh. But you look up Dinoc, and you actually see um, wards engraved into the ceiling above him. Ab uh, like above the table and uh, chairs. Shit. Uh, make an arcana check if you wish. Three. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> Look, you asked for my best subject, so... <laughs> I know. Um, the, the runes are of evocation magic. They appear to be along the lines of... More of a, of a protective nature, rather than... A, um... Harmful magic. Uh, 
All right. What I'm concerned about, though, is where's the rest of the council? Aren't they being held hostage? <laughs> no, they are not being held hostage. In fact, they were just recently sent home after we discovered the... destroyed remains of a bone dragon and he kind of looks to you guys in a an amused look also something torben is not very happy or pleased about it took a lot of effort to tame that beast don't really know how you discover that considering we were in the way the whole time, unless... Oh. He just gives a knowing smile. Yes, he said he raised it. Oh, that would explain a few things. How did he have that power? A gift, uh, if I'm not mistaken, by... Oh, what did he call it? Some Lord of Death Sleeping of King? Kind. Yeah, that one. He shouts hypocrisy. Uh, anyway, he's not happy that this is something that has occurred, but he has to recognize your guys' strength as a group in this matter anyway. As it, as it was, it took the three of us and... Several other mm, pawns, let's say, to tame this beast while as Torben was able to use this magic that was bestowed upon him. From my understanding, it was a magic that he could only do once. And he chose to tame a dragon instead of a giant. Made sense at the time. But now you're a spoiled dragon. Hmm? <laughs> to be fair, dragon. Exactly. Dra <laughs> the dragon was a higher threat at the time. And... Otherwise he went with the dragon and not one of the guardians. The guardians are not something that can be tamed, he says as he, with a chuckle. They have been... What was the word he used? Immobilized? Something along those lines, anyway. They shouldn't be a bother for him for quite some time, anyway. So, how many of you of the council are like you now? <laughs> like me? Well, not many. But then again, the council isn't very large either. It's a shame your uncle didn't join us, though, Dinoc. He would have been a valuable asset. But, nevertheless, as of the moment, he should be... Well, he should be in bed, but I'm... I'm hazarding a guess that he's up worrying about you and your team. Uh, can I insight that? Sure. Where'd my insight go? Right there. Uh, 24. 24? <laughs> Huh? He doesn't seem to be lying, or at least he doesn't seem to be knowingly lying to you. Okay. Heard that inhale. Yes. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you hate it when I word things that way. <laughs> <laughs> Look, insight Just is reading. 
Insight is reading body language, not reading somebody's (laughs) mind. You don't get to know what is actually going on. I know, but just give me a break! (laughs) (laughs) To the best of this guy's knowledge, your uncle should either be in bed or is up worrying about you. (laughs) To the best of his knowledge... That is all I can say. (laughs) So, the fact that we're here talking about this, I'm guessing you have a plan. Either use us against Torben, or... Torben is simply interested in having a conversation with you. He wishes to talk with you. And you can see him kind of roll his eyes a little bit. To be honest... Actually, let me roll this. Oh, absolutely. To be honest, I think you have scared him a little bit. Bringing down both Fodor and a Draculich is no easy task. And... Even swaying Fodor to be an ally? Hmm. That can be that could pose a very dangerous situation for Torben. Fortunately for him, he believes that the giants will be leaving soon. But I think you've rattled him. Maybe oh. not in a way to sufficiently scare him off but in a way to make him be more leery of you than he has of anyone in the ever in the past. Why don't you look at that? We kill his playthings and show that we're stronger than he imagined and how he wants to talk. He wants to have a conversation because he's afraid of losing again. So when are we having this conversation? He pauses for a moment. Night after tomorrow. If you were to accept. And where? Torben has given options. He said that we could do it here in this room. He gestures to the room around him. Or, if you guys wish to choose a location, he'd be happy to meet you there. Or, his other option would be in his... Not his. A a random uh, outcropping, we'll say, in the forests north of here. Um, I believe that is the, I believe that is the orc jaw for second here. I feel it would only be fair as long so as we have the North unrestricted. West. The Northwest as long as we, the orc jaw forest. As long Sorry. as we have unrestricted access to the beating grounds. He doesn't try to hinder us in some way. Such as imposing ridiculous curfews. A curfew was placed for the Dra- Draculich and a way to keep an eye on you. But things have changed. With the Draculich no longer being a p- problem, having a curfew is no longer necessary. I would expect the curfew to be lifted in the morning. You know, Lord Tom, I'm surprised you're this... What's the word? This far under Torben's thumb? 
I would have figured you would have figured out a way to either remove him or take control. You can see his kind of like his eye twitch a little bit at that. And he kind of smiles and that kind of like aggressive nervousness. And he just goes. <sighs> Torben has shown me a lot of different things. And in truth, while him and I may both be uh, vampires, he has been one far longer than I. And he is still. He still offers things to teach. But, but only on his time and his terms. <laughs> well, when you believe you're better than everyone else, then you are the one who sets the terms and the times. This is Torben. He believes he is master and ruler of this island. Ah. And as far as the council is concerned... He pretty much has a winning boat. And yet now that Can we have slain... Yet now that we have slain his Dracolich and have him on the run, not so much a winning hand. I know it's a bit um, off, the top, off the subject, but... I don't suppose you'll be willing to let us know what is in that other room on the other side of the chamber. Give me a moment, Katya. Dinoc, roll a... Hmm. What's an intimidation check? Not what I was going for, but okay. No, but the thing the thing is is it, it's it's a weird kind of intimidation. You're not necessarily intimidating him. You're more or less th this is more or less to see how how he responds to your your words. And yeah. Okay, 12. AI aid him. No. <laughs> You you said nothing this entire time, Cardin. You don't get to aid him. Well, I'm just trying to stand there being a presence. Basically. Being a pain? What? <laughs> you kind of... You kind of... What, what, I was going to say big dude, big axe, but the thing is worth talking to a Goliath. <laughs> what, what were your words again there, uh, Dana? You had said... Um... Uh, basically saying, um... Now that we've killed his Drake, pet. With his Dracolich dead, not right. so much a winning hand now, is it? Right, 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 right. Okay, winning hand. He kind of goes... He, he kind of... <laughs> You're smart. I'll give you that. Torben does not believe he can win without some bigger trump card. It is, while he may have the council under control and in his pocket, he doesn't have a means of being able to level this city in a moment if he needed to. Yeah, He likes to have those trump cards. But I don't believe that they are necessary. For example, and he kind of just leans back in his chair and he goes, with control of the council here, if we wished to, we could have your name and face plastered on every city, on every city corner, block, coffee shop, all over the eh. city. Dana, he'd be famous. 
Well, wanted, well, at least, at least. and I can imagine the headlines. Wanted, dead or alive. No, as a council, like he's settled home. Yeah. As a council vote, controlling the majority <laughs> is necessary. And he goes quiet. Sorry if I'm snickering because of Katie's post there. Wanted, dead or alive, reward, one cent. <laughs> yeah, one penny. <laughs> I would sell you to Satan for one corn chip. Sounds like an argument me and my brothers would have. All Carden had going through his head was like the good, the bad, and the ugly theme song. Like the dual song. Blum, blum, blum. Basically, yeah. No. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, trying to get back in. No, you're fine. He's basically just telling you that he thinks Tor uh, Torben is trying to take some extra precautions um, and that he's kind of being a coward. But this is also the cocky leader mm -hmm. of the Champions War. So. So now again, I ask. Would it be too much? The room next door. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, Enran referred to it as the treasury. Ah, oh, no wonder it's locked. Yes, that one is very, uh... That one has a very interesting lock on it. Hmm. Apparently, it was a lock set by uh, Korzar himself, and really only he or his son can. He has a son, right? Yes. Um, can unlock the the the, the room itself. Some kind of. <sighs> Bio, bio, bio Freeze. something. Bio security. Bio lock. Bio uh, freeze. <laughs> uh, he kind of points to you, um, Valinar, and goes, "Maybe I. The name is lost on me. The science of everything nowadays is very." <sighs> Not in my wheelhouse kind of says shrugging and you guys can see the massive muscles that make up this goliath individual dinak where are we going to hold the meeting may as well get it over with on the one hand i don't want to give him the chance to make this an unfair fight after all, where's the fun whenever you can just stop a fight before it begins, right? Exactly what we're here for. I turn to you and I'm like, I'm here to prove I'm stronger than him and crush him into paste for what he's done to me. Understandable. However, if he's willing to meet with us directly, then it would be very easy to do that, wouldn't it? Yes, as long as he doesn't change the playing field. I mean, it's not like he has another Dracolich around. We already killed it. Lord Tom, you said he believes... You said he said that he could only raise one? From what we have seen and observed, yes. Or at the very least, he can only do the one at a time. Now, that, that being said, there are no other dragons 
Unless you count the Dragonborn, he says, gesturing to you. On off key. There are still a few giants in the area, but I believe most of them have now congregated around your flying fortress thing. Which but makes it difficult for anyone to get near them. At least, quietly. I say as an extra precaution, if he's so desperate to meet with us, maybe we should meet tomorrow night instead of two nights from now. This is a request that I can relay to Mas to uh, to Torben, but his request was the night after. But why wait? To give him chance to cast this magic on either one of the guardians. The guardians That's what I'm most worried about. The guardians are not dead. This is not something he could ascertain in a night or two either. And I believe, at least from my perspective, he wishes to do the night hereafter in order to give you a opportunity to rest and recover in a more beneficial way to yourself. The, as if you're up all night tonight, you will sleep, you will either be up all day to be awake when the sun is up, and he gestures outside, or... You will sleep during the day and be awake at night again. And in which case, he didn't figure you would want to do, as you are not creatures of the night. Like I said, it is a, it is a message that I can relay to Torben. Uh, and uh, it is something that he can decide then. Either way, even if we were to do it tomorrow night, though, we have yet to establish a location. I think it's a load of crap if he wants us to rest. He doesn't care about our well-being. We should definitely shoot for tomorrow night. But as to where... Kind of shrugs and goes, I can relay the message. Just kind of crosses his arms, sitting at the table, leaning back in a chair. The fact that he's giving us time to recuperate, that really makes me feel that he is planning something at this point, but that's neither here nor there. Here nor there. Do we want to meet? Do we want to meet in a field outside of the city? We will meet that here. way nobody blows anything up. I believe here would be best. Yeah, I'd like to see him sneak a sneak a giant creature of some sort into this council chamber. Hmm. At least here he wouldn't have a whole lot of room to fight. Neither do we, but that's maybe what he's planning for. Very well. But... He turns and looks to you. But I request of you, Lord Tom, please ensure he does not twist things to his advantage. After all, when he and I do fight, I want it to be on equal playing field. And I just kind of smirk a little. Make a persuasion check. Um. Okay. He kind of just gives this kind of, like, 
side tooth smile and he goes, I can make no promises, but I will try to do what I can in order to keep Torben to playing nice. In the meantime, rest well. And you watch as he and he drifts backwards towards the window, turning into mist and vanishing through the window. Well, that was a neat party uh, trip. Uh, I was going to say melodramatic. That too, but... <laughs> oh yeah, because he's definitely going to walk out past you guys into the hallway where everyone could literally just gangbang him. <laughs> Am I? I don't have a reason to fight him yet. Uh, now you want to know the kicker? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There were a lot. There were a whole lot of not inciting or doing inspection checks. <laughs> anyway. Just because, and like I said, I made inspections as a combat me mechanic, but if an enemy reveals himself to you before combat, there's no reason why you can't attempt to I do that. I figured that was an obvious, you know, like, doing it would be obvious to him. I mean... And be considered hostile. Potentially. I don't, I don't think Valna has read the book yet, so... Yeah, at this point, Katya is the only one who knows about it. I've offered to pass the book around, but nobody has claimed it. Haven't had a chance. Well, I have here. no memory of this. Here. And I kind of throw the book at Dina. Anyway. Read up. Oh. Valdar is going to look at Dina and kind of go, how would he immobilize your uh, guardians? Do you have any idea? He had... Mind control magic over the giants. Well, a giant specifically. Yeah. Can I roll like an arcana to think of any magics that would do something like that? Sure. <laughs> so, there are a lot of magics that can essentially dominate a beast of some kind but you know the oh. the guardians are extremely powerful and the odds of something like that successfully working are slim to none you would imagine that there's some that he's that he's using some other means to immobilize the guardians whether that be magical or or not magical or just like even kind of um um like a hostage like either maybe like a hostage hostage situation <laughs> or like drugging them or something you're not really sure there's just so many options especially with the the technology advancement of Hofkin you just it's almost impossible to narrow it down to something that would work on a guardian. He gave the Tarasque enough weed to put her down for a week. He could have. <laughs> oh, don't know why, but that just makes me giggle. Oops, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> just wonder if there's any way to undo that immobilization. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk more at Uncle Torben's, I believe. Maybe he has. Did you just call him Uncle Torben? Sorry, Brain. It's been a long night. Let's reverse just a few seconds, please. I was about to say, do you, not, do you have something you need to share with the rest of us? <laughs> I miss that. That was Ramos the, the player misspeaking because <laughs> Ramos the player has an int of negative one. <laughs> <laughs> I am you. only barely ahead of uh, blind. Uh, I'd say I might have a plus two. 
Maybe. <laughs> Alright, so you guys are heading back to Enran's? Yes. Okay. As you guys head back to Enran's, we're going to take a break. Because it's Sweet. 10.30. And could I just mention real quick? Yeah. On the way back to Enran's, Valinar wants to go through that book he took from that bedroom. Okay, easy enough. Um, also, I'm just going to reveal this because I put a lot of things in there and I want to show it off. Hit. There's the vault. Who would do us any good to steal from the council vault? I would do this very good. We could just leave the island. How? We could leave uh... the island anyway. I'd like to know how you guys are leaving this island. Anyway, guys. We use a, teleportation circle. We're going to take a break. Take a break. We will be back in just a few minutes. All right. And we are back. Welcome uh, back, everyone. Long time no see. I know. <laughs> we had a break. I got uh, a snack. So, real quick announcement. Who all is ready for Tenocon tomorrow? Oh, that's tomorrow. Ooh. Yes. I don't know how it works. Well, it's been a year already? Yes, it has. <laughs> I think at 5 o'clock is when, like, um, the, like, main event happens. Ah, damn. Yeah, you can log on Twitch and watch their, watch the uh, Warframe podcast. Are there any drops? You get Loki Prime, I think, if you watch the stream. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> After all, they gave out Hydroid Prime last year. Damn, that's a big reward. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, that's they... for free. Like, you don't have to pay anything. You just have to tune into the stream. <laughs> like, I'm just going to leave my computer up so I can get that. <laughs> what I'm hearing is I should just download Warframe right now. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I, and I would start it pretty much immediately after the stream. That way, it's almost done by the time you leave for work in the morning. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna. It's a big game, dude. I mean, it's a oh, fun no, game. I'm at just least. starting it up right now. <laughs> um, and I think the theme's going to be about the new war. Ooh. Oh. I yes. Might tune, I might Story tune in is at some point then. Story is finally happening. Wait, they're actually doing story. We <laughs> think so. Mm -hmm. New war. Wait, Wait I have a BS. Oh, oh, never mind. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't remember the old war game. because uh, we will do that on this channel again at some point in time when I have time, and yeah. When I have time, we'll figure that out in the future. Uh, also, while we're doing a quick announcement, uh, stay tuned for later this month. We I am going to have the podcast um, up and running for uh, for our game. Um, now that we've been doing this for a little over a year, we have about a year's worth of content that is just sitting around. So we're going to put it up on a... Um, we're going to put it up in a podcast. Um, so uh, make sure you guys uh, check out my uh, Twitter for that. For those of you who like to listen on the go. Exactly. And with that, that'll bring us back into tonight, tonight's episode of D&D. Um, in Moon Dust. <laughs> we left the party. As they returned back to Inaran's estate. And you guys. We've got uh, a yeah, lot the, to tell them. Yeah, the June family. And Dinoc, you barely get a knock on, out on the door by the time it opens. And, excuse me, your uh, cousin uh, greets you with a hug. Um, Rel, there's her name. I was like, I'm looking. I was looking for it. 
uh, Rel uh, greets you with a hug, and it's just, uh, we thought you might be, please come in off the street, it's late. She ushers you guys into the, into the household, and you see um, Enran and Zalpip sitting near the fireplace in the lounge area, drinking uh, from a what appears to be a cup of wine. Oh, at least you're safe, Uncle. Yes, it was very interesting, I should say, for the sake of the city, anyway. Um, I take it the Dracolich has been hand- or the, no, he wouldn't call it Dracolich. The, the Bone Dragon has been handled by you and your, uh, friends. Oh yeah, it's been handled. I collapse into a chair. For now, the Dracolich is... Ash, more or less. It dissolved into soul fire, as far as we can tell. Soul fire? That's... Hmm. It didn't want to be turned. So it tried something, and it turned before it could finish its... I suppose you could call it... Preventative measures could go off. And the moment we defeated it... Those preventative measures kicked back in full force, as at least as far as I can tell. It is unfortunate to see the creature pass in such a way, but it is good to know that at the very least it has moved on. It would seem that Torben is running out of. Uh... Things to throw at us. At least on this island. <laughs> Don't be giving me ideas, Rona. <clears throat> Rona, if we see Torben again after this, and for any reason other than he escaped, I am definitely going to make you a permanent enemy. <laughs> <laughs> noted, noted. He seems to be the main bad guy, I mean... Why wouldn't he return? He wasn't all the time? supposed to be a main bad guy yet. Mm. Yet. <clears throat> Anyways. <clears throat> well, uh, tell us, what have you learned? That Torben's a coward. Can't fight for himself. He is. Planning a meeting the day after tomorrow, but we requested it be moved to tomorrow. Gives him less time to prepare. Do you think he has something else to prepare for? You never know with him. Given that he had an ability to raise a Draco Lich, more or less. I don't want to give him any time to make any more surprises. And, consi and considering he works for the Sleeping King, there's no telling what the Sleeping King may provide. The Sleeping King? A self-made god he worships. Literally, it was, from what I can tell, a mortal who became a god. Hmm. I feel like I've heard a story or two about the Sleeping King, but I thought it was uh, a, a fairy tale, like um, uh, the Boogie Mountain. Like other islands? Mm. Enoch, you should show him the mask. Right, with a mouse. I pull out the I white know. mask. And pull it out. Never seen it before. Nope. 
just whatever you do, it. don't put it on. As far as we can tell, it it kills whoever puts it on, and I'm willing to hypothesize that it sends the soul directly to the court of the Sleeping King. Well, that is very interesting. Because we had Torben's body, and yet Torben is still here. I think we still have his body, actually. No, I used his it. skull. Yeah, uh, I think we have his skull still. I have a piece of his flesh in a vial. I not, I can't exactly remember why I saved it, but I did for some reason. That has to smell. T- Is it not just a trophy? Maybe it's a trophy, or maybe I had some intention to study it further. Well, I would recommend not uncorking that. I don't plan on it anytime soon, but if we kill Torben a second time, maybe, maybe we as can get another. As he doesn't get the mask back. Yes, perhaps we can get another sample of his flesh and compare the two and see if there's been any change since. Other than vampirism. Uh, yes, other than the obvious. Which seems to be a gift from the Sleeping King. Yeah, he wasn't a vampire when we must met him before, and now he is one. Gift. Got to use his air quotes. Many things can be considered a gift. It just depends on how one uses said gift. Hmm. I mean, let's look at the stat state of several important figures on our island. One of the council members is a lich. How many times in other plans do you hear liches being nothing but pure evil? This is true, and Quasar is still inherently only after his own good, if you would. But nevertheless... As long as the... As long as the protection of the city lies in those interests, he will protect it with all his power. We can only hope. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying, vampirism in itself isn't necessarily the worst thing. This is true, speaks up Dalpip. And Enoch, I know you've you're not super keen on the idea of waiting, but waiting also gives you an opportunity to prepare. Have you forgotten about the aboliths? I do know something we did forget. I believe Valinar still has that sword of giants. Yeah, I was actually just thinking about that. <laughs> well, I was going to pull it back and give it to Zal- back to Zalpet. He takes it. That, and I need to... Another thing... Line. Another thing I can think we need to do. Teacher. Yes? Where are my parents' bodies? You see him finger a uh, a ring on his hand. Um, they're safe. Boblin, do you want to show Zalpip what I gave you? Uh, yeah! Scampers forward and Presents the scroll to um, one of two we found in the dragon's horde. I can actually see him running away. Head. What? <laughs> I can actually see Boblin kind of hobbling along. <laughs> Boblin is hobbling. <laughs> he pulls it out and he kind of begins skimming it and he goes, Dinoc, do you know what this means? Yes, we can 
completely reverse what that what Torben did. I Yes, I understand that there is more we could do with it, but... Dinoch, tell me, and this is the DM speaking here. Is your mind pretty much set on your parents at the moment? Partially. But that's what's primarily going through your head, is the ability to revive your parents. Equal to that, though, is the thought of this spell, but ex You know, extended. What do you mean by extended? The time... To revive. Mm, okay. Salpip doesn't say anything to you. He just kind of looks like he's going to speak and then closes his mouth. I got a roll perception to see if I noticed that. Uh, that'd be insight. No. I don't know. Trying to find what something. was that sound? Rain. Uh, yeah, because I haven't seen enough of that lately. <laughs> Jesus. Nope, that's way too but... much noise in the background. Background noises. Who? Go ahead and keep talking. Um, actually, I have a quick question. Yeah. The the spell Ray's dead. The diamond does it have to be one diamond worth five hundred gold pieces, or just diamonds totaling five hundred gold pieces? So, when you cast the spell itself, it's it consumes. Uh, you can do diamonds uh, of that value. Um. Yeah, it doesn't, as long as they equal that, it works better, okay. to your knowledge, when it's one diamond, but it, it can be accepted um, as fragments, basically. Um, but, excuse me, with it being a scroll, the, the scroll provides I, the material components, essentially. I, I was asking, because I actually have raised it. Mm -hmm. You do now, but... Ooh, yeah. I was just asking so that I knew for reference if I cast it. We're going to just go with this one. It's now raining outside, guys. Yeah. What would happen if you... Say... And I know Dionok's going to get mad at me for saying this, but... What if... We just killed your wife but then used Ray's dead to bring her back do you think it would solve the curse she's already dead I thought you put her away so that she wouldn't die no we are preserving her body to mm. <clears throat> because no she's could... not she died ten years ago <clears throat> But if she's preserved, it would be as though, what, no time has passed. Right? Unfortunately, our preservations are not that good. We are merely slowing the degradation of the body as best we can. Do you think it would be worth trying to bring her back? Keep in mind, none of you know that Valinar it can cast Ray's dead. Nadia, I thought you were supposed to be the charismatic person. 
What do you mean? I'm talking about the scrolls. No, really, what do you Here's mean by solution, that? There's a solution, but... You, you just told a guy whose wife is dead, it, and you just asked him if it would be worth it. Uh, bro, robot. The... Me? Yeah, yeah you me? robot it just a little bit. Just near okay. the end of that sentence, though, so you're back to normal. Okay, okay cool. So, wait... Do I need to repeat that, or did you guys get that? Yes, don't yes the I... ending. Okay. Yeah, your last words that we caught was, you just asked a guy whose wife is dead, and then you wrote... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Then insert deep speech, and... <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly the best person to ask that question to, Katia. On another note, do you, know, do you want to keep one of those scrolls? What do you mean, Valnar? Yeah, you, you showed me the scroll, and I actually know how to cast it now. Ironically, what? I actually have what I need on me. Oh. You... Yeah, I know how to do it now. Wow. Stupid magic. So Stupid you are my god has bullshit. me with the ability to... <laughs> magic bullshit. My god went, hey, here's how to raise people from the dead. And slap me. Alright. And that's yeah. how you learn your magic. <laughs> this is why I say the gods I just are bullshit. get slapped by the god. This is why I say gods are bullshit. Yep. I didn't realize magic worked that way. I just kind of go to sleep when I wake up, and I'm like, hey, you know what sounds good? How about if I just do this instead? Yeah, no, I just... Yeah. Yeah. And then I blow up. My magic is weird. Do without that part. Don steps outside to smoke a cigar. <laughs> okay. Completely separate note. I can also mind control people. Wait, what? Oh, that's good to know. John steps back inside. <laughs> Come again? I have a spell that lasts for 30 days, and I can give someone an order to do something. If they try to um, not do it, well, they kind of... It's... <laughs> Noted, and John steps back out to go smoke his cigar. <laughs> that spell's not important right now. But, but back to what I was saying, do you want to save one of those girls? I... If you are willing... To do such a thing, saving one of these scrolls would not be such a bad idea, then. Alright, give me one hour. And you Bonar will go raise. Yeah, Bonar will go to the body and raise it. You don't know where the body is. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Somebody will take you. <laughs> well, let's just go. <laughs> I guess Zalpip will go, Are you wanting to do this tonight, Valinar? Or do you wish to wait till morning? Uh, how long has it been, Dinoch? This is going to be the... Third day? Uh, this is like the end of day three, so it'll be... By, by like, by afternoon tomorrow, your parents will have been dead for... Four days. Well within the ten the ten day time limit. Alright. I'll just leave that up to Dinoch then, because there's still five days left on it. If he wants to do it tonight, we can do it tonight. If not, we can wait till morning. 
I feel like we should rest up and then worry about it in the morning. It'll give us more time to celebrate, I suppose. You guys literally woke up from a long rest about three hours ago. Oh, okay. Well, in that case... We are all wide awake. Let's just do it now. Let's go do it! <laughs> you guys have. The rest of the people haven't. <clears throat> Deanox's parents have been sleeping for three days. Actually, oh, quick question. Yeah. <laughs> Is the um, curfew technically still in effect right now? As of right now, yes. Okay, let's tomorrow. wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow, that way we don't run into any awkward issues with guards. Well, we could just perform it here if Enran doesn't mind. Oh, the bodies here? I assumed they were back at the, uh... Teacher. Is that, and I point to his hand, what I think it is? <laughs> Probably not. Depends on what you think it is. Part of me wants to say a modified bag of holding, but as a ring. Or not. How does that work? Incorrect. It is. <clears throat> um. Find the actual. I don't know what it is, so I'll have to find it later. Um, it's more of a... a custom kind of... ability. It's, uh... And he kind of pulls the ring free, um, and you can see that the gemstone setting set in kind of the center of the ring um, is that of amber. Um, this is a piece for my or a bolt of amber. It contains, it's a small pocket, so to say, that allows me to contain uh, some stuff with inside. Like my, like their bodies. Kind of nods solemnly. I suppose no safer place, right? Sorry, say that again? I suppose no safer place, right? There's one, but... I wouldn't be able to arrange for that on such short notice. You know how hard it was last time getting something like that to set up. Hmm, mm-hmm. Also, uh, Valinar, your um, spell casting. How does it? Uh, how the materials that you need? What? Do, what do you have? Show me. Uh, Valinar's gonna pull out the five hundred gold worth of diamonds. All right, and these are of separate diamonds, right? Yeah, it's two one hundred and one three hundred. So, I reread the the spell, and it does say A uh, diamond, okay. meaning one, but what um, uh, Zalpip is going to do is he's going to reach out and actually take the diamonds and kind of combine them using his own transmutation magic and create them as one. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, okay. So, Fancy. Because spells special types of wizards can do that. And 
Alpip has been training in multiple. So, something I'm going to allow for him to do, and as a way to fix my mistake. Okay. And he goes, very well. And then you watch as he pulls, he pulls the amber off of the ring, and another one kind of slides into place, and he pulls that out. And he does this five times, and he sets five pieces of amber on the floor, um, kind of in a almost box and center-like shape. And he uh, opens his spell book and begins to do a ritual. Uh, so during this time, there's about there's a brief time where he is casting this spell. Eleven minutes. Is there anything you guys would like to do in the meantime? I know that Dinoch will be watching this closely. Understood. Not so like a gym. It's not like a gym somewhere nearby. Pumping iron, iron kind of gym. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there might be one within the estate. You don't know. You could ask Rel if you really Just wanted to. Just look at the couches. I, I mean. Mm. <laughs> nah, I'm good. Card's feeling lazy tonight. It's not a it's not a lot of time. It's only eleven minutes. So if there's nothing you guys oh, wish to yeah. do, eventually, okay. I'll uh, I'll do a little extra reading for my uh, the book containing the Storm yeah. God's Wrath. It, concerning the Storm God's Wrath. Containing the Storm God's Wrath. Yep, I've had that on me for a while. Looking forward to some more lightning spells. Okay. Nothing strikes your fancy in the 11 minutes that it takes you to, to, for Dalpip to complete this ritual. And as he does, uh, there's this kind of almost shimmer of light as the five pieces of amber kind of float in the air. And he places his hands above above the, um, the pieces of amber. And for a moment, nothing happens. And then... <laughs> Two charred and blackened corpses Ugh. drop, kind of appear Wince. on the floor, <gasps> and Zalpip collects the pieces of amber in his hands, begins to slide them back into his ring. You got any other cool parlor tricks? He kind of, he kind of chuckles. <laughs> A wise man never reveals all of his tricks. Fair enough. But I quickly reread over the spell. Mm -hmm. So the is, correct me if I'm spell. wrong. But with their bodies as charred as this, would it restore that? I am not one that is great with medicine, at least not without cutting open the body. Hmm. At first Valinor, glance, would you have it? At first glance, um, there doesn't seem to be anything missing or anything largely wrong with the bodies. I don't know if it would restore the charredness from their flesh, but that is something that I believe and be replaced over time with new skin cells. The internal major organs are the thing that I question the most. Would I be... Sorry. Would I be able to tell from glancing that anything that uh, might still remain after reviving I could heal? You... 
you would have to the body would have to be livable first in order for the soul to return to it. Okay. So basically, you need to make sure that the um, like all the interior organs are still there, or at the very least in working condition. If if they're there enough that could restore a if the body could live, it will return the body to life and the soul to it. And then if there needs to be, magical healing could take place. Okay. Can I do a medicine check to see if uh, the body is considered livable? Uh, I was about to ask if I could, and I think my medicine's better than yours. No offense. Probably. Both of you could make medicine checks if you'd like. Sure, we'll work together. Yeah. Or you could aid Valinar. I'll aid him. Soft well, he doesn't need, him, he doesn't but need okay. your aid, so... <laughs> He's like, step aside, I got this. How do you get out of my way? Stop it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I will say, go ahead and roll two, one for each body. Um, and I'll say that you okay. can, that he'll aid you with the second one just as a precaution. Oh, I like that. Okay, you. cool. <laughs> okay. So, to the best of your knowledge, the internal organs are damaged, but not destroyed. Most likely, to the best of your knowledge here, Valinar, if Dinox's parents come back, they will be in some very extreme pain for a period of time <laughs> um, for a period of time uh, but everything that they would be in pain from could be healed naturally by magic and potentially by science depending on what exactly Zalpit can do and his ability to in his abilities and stuff. Ooh. So. I might be able to provi provide some healing salve, but I don't think I have the herbs on hand. Or, we you know, a... I'm a player. Right, and Ro will speak up and kind of go, we have a um, a greenhouse on, on property, if you think that that would be helpful. That would be very helpful, actually. Because the last time I went looking for herbs, I almost died. But at least this is a nice... What? This is a nice, secure greenhouse, correct? Sort of. What herbs do you need? I can run and fetch them. Uh, with this... What kind of check would I have to do to, re to recall this information? You're proficient in an herbalism kit. You can just say, I tell her the er the herbs that I require. Okay. <laughs> I tell her exactly <laughs> the herbs that I require. Hopefully they have that or something similar too. Mm -hmm. And she goes, I believe we have most of those. I will go check. I'll, I'll be back in a, in a few minutes. And All she right. leaves. I think she was really just looking for an excuse to get away from the bodies. But... <laughs> It'll work. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, someone was trying... Oh, Valinar, you were saying you're a healer. Nobody believes you at that at this point, dude. Uh... <laughs> um, you're a yeah. healer? Let me incite that. Go on ahead. <laughs> you're full Guess of what? crap. I'm... Guess what? I'm a healer. He has the capacity to heal. <laughs> or the ability to heal, I guess I should say. Valinar is a healer. I'm a medic. I just I'm just there to make you feel a little more comfortable while you slowly die. And I'm just a really late doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so I just send people to the late doctor. Alright, well <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so do you guys do the the spell first? Does Valinar cast a spell first, or does Dinoc use one of the scrolls? Um, quick. 
I have a question regarding that. How long does the scroll take to cast? Uh, it's the same time period. It takes an hour either way you do it. Um, okay. Well, that should be enough no, time to make no, up the scrolls can healing be cast. Okay, that's interesting. Now, now I'm going to have to look that up. Um, oh, one <laughs> second. We're going to go... Because I think... I think spell scrolls can be read as an action. Yeah, because I thought it was a use item action. Um... Uh, casting the spell requires the spell's normal casting time. So, it would require... Uh, it would require an hour to cast even as a spell or as a scroll. So basically, there's just a lot of details in the scroll that have to be read out loud um, to initiate the magic, and it just takes an hour to read it all, basically. Mm -hmm. So they take about the same amount of time. Which one? Who would like to go first? Anyway, that should give me enough time to mix up the healing salve and apply it to the charred skin before we bring them back. Well, they haven't. She has not returned yet, so we'll see. Hopefully. Hopefully. Well, you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? I believe it would be better to have you ready to heal first. I will use the scroll. Yeah. Um, first things first, go ahead and just give me a... Um, this would be a intelligence check. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's a it's a fairly low DC. I'm just doing this more but... or less for the sake of it. You're good. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, the DC was five. You literally could only fail it if you rolled a natural one. This was more or less for hee hee moment. Um. So you spend an hour casting the spell. Eventually, Rona uh, Rel does return. And brings okay. uh, healing uh, the, the herbs that you need to begin mixing for a sap. And you begin cool. to mix. Uh, unfortunately, due to the timing and stuff, she does not return. You do not have it ready to go in before right. the spell is finished, but you are finishing it kind of as the spell wraps up. Okay. I'm prepared um, to hear screaming. Sort of. <laughs> so. Dinoch, as the scroll kind of, as you finish the scroll and the scroll begins to burn away, you, mm -hmm. you feel yourself, you see the scroll kind of stop for a moment. Mm -hmm. And you're like, that's weird. And you look up and you look around. And. Everything's frozen in time, isn't it? Actually, you see nothing. You... Oh, this is that! You are in a black, voidless expanse. 
Mm -hmm. There's no sound or smell or touch to hit your senses. And as you look back at your hands, the scroll's gone. Mm -hmm. For a brief moment, you begin to wonder and question if what you can see here as this darkness fills your eyes. Well, that's not right. And eventually, being left alone for a moment, you begin to think, this the other side. Did I die? Did I cross over? And a voice calls out. No, you are not dead, mortal. And as you kind of turn around, you see stand, or kind of behind you, not standing, this large humanoid with opalescent green skin rippling with muscles, a tunic tied around the waist with this massive greatsword resting in its scabbard at its side, and a pair of giant feathered white wings on his back, gently moving, keeping him aloft, you believe? You're not sure how long he's been there. He looks down at you. You are attempting to bring back one which is dead. Yes. Why? Why do they were they, taken from does... me unfairly? Uh, real quick question: Are you are you casting this on mom or dad? I forgot to specify here. Uh, dad first. Dad, okay. And he kind of just goes. Why does he deserve a second chance when so many others? Do not get to the second chance. I understand he was taken from you unfairly, but so much in mortal life is unfair. Because an enemy of mine was upset I broke his toy. Is it not, do humans not kill a lot of jealousy and anger frequently? They do. So how is this any different? Because I found the power to be able to influence this. And you have. But, many, <laughs> as you know him, Mortis is not a kind god. Oh, oh I know that full and well. He already took something from me ten years ago. Someone he should not have. And we are aware of this. But my question still stands. Or rather, let me ask a new one. What will this man contribute to society that makes him worthy of a second chance? My father was, and should we, should he be returned, will be a great, do you believe the term he used is biochemist? Working on altering the mortal body. Among his plans that I remember from my childhood, he had ones to heal eyesight, Enhanced senses that have been long brought in a way, of, you could say. 
But you would deem him the valuable asset to your planet. If not for those reasons, then perhaps weapons of war that could prevent great tragedies. Yes. I would like you to make me a persuasion check. I figured. Yeah. Ah. Very well. I understand. Do not trust us necessarily. But I also wish you to know that this is not A sign of hostility or goodwill. I expect... A business transaction. Perhaps. I expect for your father to do good things for your planet in the future. Before we conclude, my friend will be performing the same spell soon on my mother, also taken in the same event as my father. And I would encourage She is the only foil for his more... How to say... Hair-brained schemes? Without her, he would make and make and make without restraint. to the detriment of all around him. Okay. Um, are you going for, what are you, what are you going, are you going for persuasion here again? Yeah, another persuasion. Okay, yeah, I'll uh, make another persuasion check. I don't know if you were better. Ooh. I don't know if you were better at something else or not. <clears throat> um. <laughs> he kind of goes, Interesting. Well, I eagerly await his arrival. And I will... Consider your war. He rolled low enough. And with that... You no longer see the this void. You see the paper finish burning from your hands. And you guys watch for as a moment the, the still body of Dinoch's father doesn't move. And then eventually you see breath draw into it once more. <sighs> And you can hear him beginning to groan in pain. Ooh, good heal. Very nice. And he begins. Let me help you with that. You hear? Um, so go ahead, for, uh, Katya, and roll the slavs with good with good material. Man, this dice is really loving you guys tonight. Go ahead. Um, how, um, I will say you have uh, four applications okay. of this healing slav. Um, using one application uh, heals for two d six uh, plus your okay. your uh, casting modifier. Or okay. No, it wouldn't be casting. It would be your wisdom modifier. Mi minimum of one. Okay, so it can't go below zero. You have a negative one. Do you, do you have a do you have a, a plus to your wisdom? I have a minus one. Okay, so it'll be two d six plus one. That that is what it'll okay. be uh, for the healing slav, and that's just because I rolled a natural twenty for the ingredients that they. Oh have. wow! Damn. Yeah. All right. That's an additional eleven. Very nice. Damn. Um, 
I will say with the, with that, the internal organs of Demonax Father have been stabilized. There's still a little, um, well, between the Eleven on the Magic and then the Slav, it is definitely helping with a lot of the major areas of the pain. Um, and the internal organs have been uh, stabilized in a sense, meaning that they're no longer like ruptured or broken. Um, things still hurt, uh, but he's feeling a lot better than he was a few minutes ago. A few seconds ago. <laughs> Before we get too much further, just make sure you write down how many uses you have, um, Katya. Got it. Religion on who that was? Uh, sure. It is not a god, you know that. Um, to the best of your knowledge, it is a, he is an angel, some subservient as an angel to some deity. You're not sure who, but your best guess would probably be Mortis, it, or... Um, I could have said... I probably would have said Pan because he was green. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you would, you would, you would. Well, it's, it's like a, yeah, it's weird. Uh, so you would guess he's probably some kind of angel to either Mortis or, um. Uh, Palutena. 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 Thank you. Um. You would. That's Life. Your, that's your best guess, um, <clears throat> but you would I would say with a 14, you would recognize what kind of angel that was, and that was a planetar angel. Mm -hmm. So, and if you look in the, in the monster manual, they are green-skinned, so... That is how that goes. But that's what you know. Um, eventually, your dad does calm down, but he does pass out kind of due to pain and the shock of things. Um, yeah. Not that he would be... Understandable. Not, the, not that he would be of uh, wanting to have much conversation as of the moment anyway. So, what would you do? Well, that was a thing. Valna. When you cast a spell, you will deal with an angel of some kind. I, I do believe it was a planetar. But for who, I don't know. So it'll be interesting then. He asked why my father or whoever the spell is used for is worthy to return, essentially. Guardian of Souls then. wonder if he could have denied the coming back then. Possible. You can always ask him. Yeah. Oh! No point in overthinking it, so let's go. Yeah. Valnar's gonna start his... Unless anyone stops him, Valnar's gonna start his casting on, I guess, Dinox's mom. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and start applying the salve before they she wakes up. Okay, understood. I'll have you roll that um, whenever after the spell is completed. Okay. Okay. Just so it doesn't get lost in rolls or anything like that. Fair enough. Um, Valinor, this is a spell from your own spell slot, so you do not need to make a check. But as the spell begins to come to an end, you too find yourself in that void. 
that black expanse. Similar sensation. But before you even have time to kind of think about whether or not you have died or not, you hear, Welcome, mortal. And again, you see this oh. large humanoid angel with opalescent green skin, massive muscles and the sort. And he asks you the same question. Why? Why does this one Why get a is... second chance? I believe everyone deserves a second chance. Just a shame that we can't give it to everyone. He smiles. That is... Interesting that you say those words. The second chance is what Mortem believes in a lot more than what people give him credit for. However, death is his domain. By his domain and in subsequence, it's also his power. Yes. Over the gods, we... also grant. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh. You say, however, the gods also granted me the ability to bring people back from the dead. I'm sorry if it's offensive, but I have a friend who lost his parents, who is on the edge. Hell, he was on the edge before they died. Do you... I can't sit there and just watch him go insane go ahead and make a persuasion check with advantage oh uh, well that's good because I have a nake one to persuasion ah, <laughs> 10 or 10 take your pick <laughs> and it goes I understand and I feel for the for the for the dragon but while while this is a power granted to you by the gods there is still much that the gods argue and bicker over power of death power that Mortem controls he does not like giving it to those unwilling and undeserving and in fact he is aware of your struggle with Torben he himself was born from Mortem's grasp and he is not happy with that so, know this, young Alkalite. Bringing someone back from the dead is very. I'm thinking of a word. Bringing someone back from the dead can be very challenging. There are times when the soul w does not wish to return. There are times when the soul is unable to, to return due to maybe not being here or being around. Then there are times in which mortem will not grant the souls to Every time a soul enters his realm, 
it becomes harder for them to escape. So remember this going forward. And best of luck against the altar. The vision begins to fade. Unless there's anything you want to shout at the very end here. Uh, quick question before I shout something. Yep. Do I know what the All Drinker is? Uh, yes, that is the name it of It sounds Torben. familiar? Yeah, Torben. Oh, okay, Torben, cool. Torben, that's Torben's new title. Torben the All Drinker. And it has been said before in the campaign. Okay. I, I know I heard it, I just couldn't remember where. I don't think there's really anything that... Donna would probably just shout back, Thanks for the info. And with that, you find yourself back in... Enoch's home. And uh, with Enoch's mother beginning to... <sighs> Breathe again. But, um, go ahead and roll your healing slav, Rona. All right. Uh, six. Not much. That's not good. Not very good, but it does help. It helps with some of the surface pain. Um, but she is in a lot of pain, and there's a healing. Ooh, that makes it a difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so that does help. Um there is no no risk of internal bleeding with that. Um and eventually she too does drift off, um, kind of blocking out from pain at a certain point. You guys eventually take them to a area within the home to rest and recuperate. And Uh, so, and as that happens, Zalpip kind of, as they're being taken away, Zalpip looks to you, Dinoc, and goes, that's one problem solved. Still more to go. Yes. The other problem will be solved within a day or two. Are you wanting to confront Torben tomorrow night? Wish to explore different avenues. I will say once again, there's the possibility that the Abolets might know something. Maybe even about the Sleeping King. Yes, you... He may be right. Uncle Onron, can yes. you send a messenger to... I suppose at this point, we know for sure that the Tom family is... At least, Lord Tom is 100% in Torben's circle. Yes. I actually have some news on that myself. He kind of says, kind of rubbing his eyes as he's tired, you can tell. Mm -hmm. I can definitely send a messenger to to the Ta Tam fan family. But in terms of the council, There is not much that Torben would not be able to get away with. During our stay in the council chambers, discussing ways of to handle the situation, it was revealed that Jor and Jean and the Jythas family of the Dragon Ward are both 
turned. They are both vampires within Torben's court. We saw at least with Lord Tom how far he is. Fully vampirized. Hold on one second. Hello? Real Hi. life took over for a second. Okay. Everything just got extremely quiet and I thought I got disconnected. I'm writing. <laughs> I, I might have uh, misunderstood something. Clarify real quick. Um, we relocated uh, Dinox parents. So, did were they carried off by like servants, or did like Valinar and Katia move them? Oh, uh, well, uh, we'll find out when he gets back. Okay. Sorry about that. My oh, there he is. Yeah, my I turn over my shoulder. My dog's peeing on our carpet. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which one? The. Uh... Dante. The jerk. Got the dumbass. Yeah, I just threw him outside. Anyway, <laughs> um Nice. Uh, so also... who took the who took my parents outside? Uh it would have been servants within the um Okay. Uh within the uh the family here. Fair um, enough trusted people and they're not taking them outside they're taking in th them to like the same outside kind of room, room that El um enran was in himself uh for to, for recovery so and then he continues the cord kodoro family ben ray is a she is not herself, but she is not a vampire. I believe she's probably controlled. I believe she's under some sort of powerful charm effect. And then that leaves myself and Kozar. Obviously, I am not a vampire. And Corzar is unaffected by the charm effects and cannot be turned into a vampire as he is already part of the undead. However... Mm. But are you charmed? I don't believe so. Can I insert Ryan, that? How many dispel magics can you cast today? Um, I can cast I think it's three. To ensure, uh, Uncle, would you submit to a dispel magic? Just of course. All right, I guess I'm casting dispel magic on him. Cast dispel magic. You don't feel it take place, but that's because there's no magic there. At this point, I am overly cautious. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> he go, but he goes, however, Kozar isn't one to lift a hand against someone if he's not in their way, in a sense. 
Hozar does not care what Torben does or his court. As long as they do not interfere with him and his family and their business, he doesn't care. And of course, he's always been this. And you can hear him kind of growl. <laughs> that kind of dragon, that kind of like dragon growl resonating in his chest. Mm -hmm. But he's also not against us. So it is put either way, however, it is a three to two vote, even if we did manage to convince Corzar into joining my cause. So there's no way we could out battle Torben in the council. There's not a enough member. He could if he wanted something he would they would vote. There would be nothing we could do. Unless we are somehow able to cast a spell magic on Lady Condro. But even then, that would be very difficult, if not near impossible. It is possible. I feel like I'm grasping. Yes. I feel like I'm grasping at straws at this point. <laughs> what if? What if you could charm someone? Um, how do I put this? Is it possible to charm someone who's already been charmed to override it? Uh, Arcana check? Um, sure. Mirror. Okay. Damn. In theory, That'll work. Ooh. In theory, Dinoc, to the best of your knowledge, it, has, it is not something that has been tested, um, but it is possible. You would believe it. Mm -hmm. While there's no... While no one has ever tried it, the, th the th logic is sound. It mm. should override the previous. As long as it's at least the Equal same level or stronger. Or higher? Yes. And as long, okay. as, long as it... And, and as long as it would... Um... Like counterdict the the previous um, charm, like you know, for example, if if the previous charm says to sit, but your charm says to crochet, they will sit and crochet. But if one order is sit and the other is stand, then it would go with the whatever spell is essentially the highest. Okay. At least either that or I would do like or I would have you do like a competing role against the other person's uh, you know spell or like DC or something like that it would be some kind of competition probably is probably how I would do that since we are going to speak with the Avalets tomorrow it would seem do you suppose one of them might be able to override the charm spell they might have knowledge that we don't, but I, I don't know. Nobody has really spoken with the Abaliths. They're sort of the um, guardians of the lake. Not many. I'm getting them to do anything outside of the Leviathan's orders would probably be worse than pulling teeth. There is a society down there, but um, not often that people go to visit. Careful. We, we would have to be on our guard, yes. But maybe we can uh, get them to see the dangers that Torben's regime posed to the land in a whole, as a whole. They may be willing to cooperate if we can persuade them thoroughly enough. Potentially. Well, they... Question. 
Do we know their stance against demons? Were they involved in the war at all? I don't. Looking. Looking. Weird aberrations. <laughs> um hmm. that's funny so oh, I gotta make this check for your mentor <laughs> what is that Apocalypse have a eternal memory, but they also have a um how do I say this? Loathe for the gods. They didn't necessarily take care about the side. demon war. Yeah. They were fairly indiscriminate in, uh, during the entire era. But now they serve as protectors to the Leviathan. This is changing again. And they, um, Occasionally allow for people to the lake. Oh, there goes that. Shoot. If they had been involved in the war against the demons, the fact that Torben has been working with, or at least for, a demon lord, general. I don't think we've ever quite cleared what he was. Powerful demon. Uh, what was his name? Tenebra. Ten Tenebras? Tenebras. Ten Tenebras. Yes, I was trying to avoid you said. <laughs> that. The uh... fact that he was sacrificing innocent maidens. Isn't there... There may be another possibility. Did it... Valinar, didn't you mention earlier that you now have the ability to... What was it? Control people? Mind control? <laughs> it's, Mind control. <laughs> it, it's basically what... Kind of like what Torben does. In a sense, but not as strong. I can give someone a command, and as long as it takes with the next 30 days, Robot. Ah. What was that? Ah. Am I back? Yep. Yes. Um, okay. So basically, um, it's a charm in which I give someone a command, and as long as that, as long as the spell takes hold, they have to follow that command, or take a lot of damage. That sounds more powerful than it. With a side effect. This sounds more powerful than a basic charm spell. Yes, but the backlash would probably be great. All you really have to do is say, defy Torben. Uh... What do yep, the others think assuming... of this plan? It's also I mean... worth noting. It, it's also worth noting this is the same level of strength that is required for Ray's dead. You know what we just did to bring back Dinox parents. So something you can only do once a day. Yeah. 
Well, worst case scenario, you overwrite Torben's charm on her to oppose him. And either she follows your command or she decides, nah, I'm going to like Torben. And then she dies and Torben can't control her anymore. That's assuming she lets me get off the spell. It takes a minute to cast. It would also probably be easier for him to try to dispel the the charm rather than... Ooh, yes, that's a good idea, too. Yeah, there are so many we already charm. There are so many options available to us. What would you guys like Fair to plan to do for the morrow? Well, first, let's see if John, Asta, or Cardin have any input. Isn't John outside smoking in the rain? I assumed there was a porch. <laughs> yeah, I'm still smoking because, like, I could have helped healing and stuff, but now I'm outside. That's a you hell of a cigar. So, you, so you've been smoking for roughly two and a half plus hours? No, I finished the cigar, but I didn't want to go back inside. The topic was, like, very triggering for John, so I just chilled outside. Okay. And Asta and Cardin? Cardin, um... He, he's all for killing Torben. Whatever way we can, can accomplish that, well, <laughs> I think we should at least hear him out. Maybe he'll have some good, in, good information, at least on the Sleeping King, if we can't get it elsewhere. I doubt he'll give us anything truthful, but... He's interested in talking, so let's talk. We can kill I him. Mean, the, the people of uh, my home might might know a little bit more, as even though we are primitive compared to what you have here, okay. we are closer to the source. All right, Carton, here's what we do. I will throw you off the island, and when you land somehow down on the surface, you can ask your people for us. We'll meet you down there. Do I get a glider? A what? No! I don't think they have those here, do they? Fun fact, there's actually a falling damage cap. Yeah, it's when you die. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. I think we lost Asta. I saw her drop out. No, she... I know she's fading and she has work in the morning, so... That's fine. We're getting ready to wrap up. Am I being talked to? Sort of. Maybe. We were just saying you got out of roll 20. Oh, did it do that stupid thing again? Absolutely. Yeah, they're just wondering how you want to go about um, uh, killing uh, Torben, if you, how you guys want to do things. Axe to the face works. <laughs> also, what do you think about uh, us just just subverting the natural order of the world and bringing two people back from the dead? Yeah. Not something you've ever seen in their arena. <laughs> I'm just sort of like, well, it happens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cardin, you have never seen anyone come back to life other than the other than like getting knocked unconscious. 
That is true. So, it's probably a little more shocking for you than anything. Fair. I mean, in my opinion, it's not any different than Dinoch raising them as skeletons. It's just, in this case, they're not skeletons. They're just burned people. Let souls. You know, have a soul put back in their body and can speak and are, once again, living. So, DM question. Are you guys planning on going to speak with the Abolis, then? I believe so. I don't I mean, think I should bring the troublemakers along. <laughs> yeah, Boblin should stay here. I was talking about you, but being polite about it. Oh. If it makes you feel better, I knew who you meant. <laughs> I'm a I, mean, I, I thought he was talking about Carton. Oh, he's honestly, Carton. at this point, same. Yeah. Honestly, Carton. at this part point, Carton is less of a problem than Katya. Oh, I figured you were going to leave Cardin and Katya behind and just take everybody else. Well, I mean, I'm yes, that was the plan. plan. So, what are you going to do if things go south and you need the extra help and I'm not there or Cardin's not there? I mean, do better than we normally do. <laughs> John comes in the door. Oh, shit! <laughs> oh, you heard that one. Yeah. <laughs> he just opens the door. Oh, closes it again. Well, fine. If that's how it's going to be, I'll hang out here and I'll I'll watch your parents no, for you. Oh, Katya, I was... I'm sorry, that was... I needed to de-stress a little bit, and that joke was just too perfect of a you moment. Could just, you could just mage hand card in a bunch. That's what you do for me. <laughs> I mean, I may cham, may chand, may cham, <laughs> may chand him. That's one way to almost. make it fly. I may chand him, almost as much. If it makes you feel any better, when we go to speak with the Aboleths, I'll keep my mouth shut as best I can. This will it require. I do believe this will require intense diplomacy, considering the Aboliths are... I don't understand Aboliths, so it's probably best if I don't open my mouth. Well, you don't even have to open your mouth. They can just... Read my thoughts. You think. Yes. Oh, hell, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, Aboliths At least are that's scared. what I heard. never dealt with one myself, but... It's gonna be difficult for all of us, and, and I'm sure their their ears might be bleeding from whatever Cardin is thinking. No, I think they just might be bored out of their skulls. Whack. That's all he's that's going on in his head. Whack, whack, whack. Anyway, let us retire for the evening and prepare in the morning for... The day's events. Yes. Traveling to the Aboliths, uh, as it were. That sounds fair. There might be a lot of preparation needed for this. So, make sure you all get plenty of rest. I will take a sheet of metal, and I will fashion it into a hat, and I will wear that on my head. Do you want oh, it to be I... aluminum or tinfoil? You have it? Oh, so you already have some. Cool. Um, aluminum. I think that'd work better. Why don't you just do both? Oh, I want to be able to lift my head. I mean, you might rest better if you hit your head with the aluminum. I was saying I'll make a hat out of it so that I can wear it when we visit the Aboleths. No one tell him. I'm on a tall one. Does he need a tinfoil hat? 
That's just what we were talking about. I I know. So, I know that's right. what we were talking about. With that, you guys collect yourselves for the evening. On that note, guys, I'm off to bed. You guys head off to bed and get a long rest in. And tomorrow, the and, and in the morning, you guys will head in search of knowledge and diplomacy with the Abolis. Whatever the hell that's gonna look like. A mess. We'll find out next time. <laughs> no, seriously, everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, this was a lot of fun. I didn't know what the party was gonna do. But they didn't. What are you guys gonna do? I never know what you guys are gonna do. That's the great thing about D and D. You guys can literally just stop playing this game and decide that you guys are gonna be potato farmers for the rest of your your guys uh, your characters' mortal lives. And if I lose all my powers, why not? But yeah. although kind of hard to grow potatoes in the desert. This was an option all along. Yes. Yeah, we just we just kind of kidnapped you. <laughs> I could have been a potato farmer, but no, I had to go on this adventure and leave my home with a bunch of dumbasses. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That character. Yeah, you're not that wrong. Character. He's just trying to be a potato farmer. He just keeps getting dragged off on adventures. <laughs> my true boss story here. <laughs> anyway, um, God damn it, not again. <laughs> join us. <laughs> join us next week, guys. Um, the twenty third, we'll have uh, our next session. I don't think there's anything going on that week, and so we'll uh, see if we can't see what the abolists are up to. God, pray for us. We are going into a hell. Yeah. Sweet. Good night, everyone. What are we doing? Good night, everyone. Good night. Till next time.